Hi everyone and welcome to this demo of the OSR for Rights Tools Hub. OSR for Rights is a multidisciplinary project funded by the UK's Economic and Social Research Council, which explains uh, and examines how open source research has transformed the landscape of human rights fact-finding. As Manmonic have reported, there are more hours of footage of the Syrian conflict on YouTube than hours of the conflict itself. And this huge volume of evidence poses a challenge for human rights investigators seeking to discover, preserve and verify the most relevant content. And it was from this realization that the OSR for Rights Tools Hub was born. We've developed a suite of open source free tools to help investigators filter large collections of open source evidence. I'll now hand you over to my colleagues for a quick demo of some of those tools. As part of OSR for Rights, we developed a hate speech detection tool that is able to classify whether a piece of text contains hate speech or not. The tool that we developed is based on state-of-the-art natural language processing models trained on Twitter datasets and can currently handle three languages, namely English, Russian, and Arabic. You can quickly try the tool by entering a piece of text here and clicking on this button. We also wanted to cater to the most common use case, which is that human rights investigators already have some texts or tweets that they want to classify as hateful or not. What you first have to do as a user is to prepare your data in the form of a CSV or comma-separated values file. You can do this by using a text editor such as Notepad++, which is what I am currently using. What I will show you now is how to create a very small data set based on some complex examples taken from a recently published paper. To start with, the file should contain a header called text. It is okay if your data has many columns, as long as there is one column or header called text. It is also important to note that each example should be enclosed in double quotes, especially if they contain commas within. I do apologize if some viewers might find the content of these examples offensive. I will now save this data set as a CSV file. Once I've done that, I can go to the OSR for Rights platform and click on the hate speech tab. Now, one has to scroll down until they find the choose file button over here to upload the CSV file that was just prepared. You will then be shown a page which alerts you to the status of the job. In this case, it's now running and you will be receiving an email once the job has finished. Once you have received that email, you can click on the link in that email that should lead you directly to the results or refresh this page. As you can see here, each of the examples has been analyzed by our model, which then pr provides a prediction. Here, both of the examples were correctly classified as containing hate, even if they were tricky and complex examples. We also provide a score, which ranges from 0 to 100, indicating the extent to which an example contains hate. This is a demonstration of the face search tool. I've got 20 photographs here uh, taken from Big Bang Theory and from Friends. The first thing we need to do is create a folder called search. So this is the folder that the software will look through trying to find a match. And then I need to create another folder called target. Uh, this can actually contain more than one um, person or one image in it. Um, and for this example, I'm gonna put, uh, say this picture of Jennifer Aniston into target. Um, and then I'm going to put the rest of them into um, the search folder. So that's going in search. So we can see inside search now I have 19 items um, and inside target I've got one item. Next I need to zip these. Um, so this zip here just now contains uh, these two folders zipped up. And of course you can name this something that makes sense. So let's just call this uh, face demo one or face one. Uh, the next thing I do is go to the website. So here I've got the face search tools. We have various tools. I've gone to face search, uh, choose a file. Um, and in my photos here, I've got this face one zip I just created. So I'm going to open that. You see that uploads to the website um, and straight away it now starts running that process. So what it's going to do now is uh, create a virtual machine um, and then it will load on our data and it has a software in the virtual machine to then be able to process this. If you wish to see what's going on, you can refresh this page. Um, uh, and it's already done it. So here we go. This was the target I put in. Um, and then these ones here are the matches. Now you can actually view this um, a bit better on this HTML results thing. So we get to see it as a proper page. So the number here reflects the difference in the faces. So here it's saying there's a slight difference between these two. Um, anything below 0.6 is pretty good actually. So this is pretty confident that's the same. Um, this one is saying it's found in, in this group of people. 
a matching face to this one, the target. Um, and this one it's saying it's pretty confident as well. When we get down here, we've got to the less confident ones. Um, as I say, 0.6 is about the cutoff. So this should be pretty good. After this, it gets a bit dubious. Um, so here it's got one wrong. We're saying this tool is something to help you um, in terms of searching through, possibly say you had 10,000 images and you need to find possible matches, but it also brings ones back that it's not 100% confident on that then a human could verify whether they believe it to be true or not. So I'm going to demonstrate speech parts and the first thing I'm going to do is create a demo um, audio file and here I'm going to make some noise and talk and then I'll upload that file and see what it does. One, two, three. Four, five, six. So here's the file that I just made, the audio file. One, two, three. Four, five, six. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that's 15 seconds long. So this is the OSR for rightstools.org website and here's a speech parts tool and he you can see it can load video files as well as various audio files so choose the file and here's my test audio uploading that and now it's going to start processing it um, and we can see in the logs what's going on so we can see it's set up a virtual machine and it's already processing it it's running the job if i go to results um, see here actually it's completed already in the time I got there if I go to details um, I can actually now download those results so here a file is being downloaded so once you download the zip file um, you get this which I'll unzip it and we see what's inside so there should be two things one is the audio file uh, which I'll just play so you can see what we've got one two three four five six a b c d e f g so you can see that's cut out the uh, gaps between where there's no voice and then this text file which actually records here and shows us um, where in the file it's actually cut the bits from hi auto archiver is a tool which archives images and videos from sites such as youtube facebook and twitter Firstly, we start with a Google spreadsheet containing the links that we're interested in. Our tool runs every minute and produces output like this. The first example here is a tweet from me and Ma with an image that we're interested in. Our tool firstly takes a screenshot of that tweet at that time. Then we get the image in the tweet. Here it is. And we hash it. And then we hash all the information. And this proves uh, that this is what it was like at that time. The second example here is Facebook. And the Facebook contains a video which we're interested in. It's the same thing. We take a screenshot and then we download the video and save it to our cloud storage. Now the cloud storage can be digital ocean spaces or it can be uh, Google Drive. And they, they can be public or private. We also save for videos a thumbnails to make it easy to see uh, what's in that video. And we save the title and the duration as well. In summary, this tool can save a huge amount of manual time archiving data from sites. It's used in production at the moment. And if you'd like a demo, please get in touch with us. Thank you for listening to our tech demo. We invite you to get in touch if you want to hear more, use the tools or collaborate. And we'll be hosting an Ask Me Anything session for all of your questions. Goodbye.